info to x1.5 tfx and welcome back to another video well this time i have a little bit of a cheat sheet here because uh, i'm gonna be a it's a little bit scripted but yeah i'm gonna <clears throat> well this video is gonna be titled <clears throat> a humbling experience and a lesson understood well <clears throat> Last week, uh, excuse me, I have a little bit of a head cold, so if I'm making a little bit of weird noises, you know what it's coming from. <clears throat> anyway, well, last week I was asked by a recording artist to uh, photograph a session, a studio session, uh, while they were recording uh, uh, new material. And I'm gonna keep that a little bit of it on the down low. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna show any images in this video about that session because it's still a work in progress and I don't want to spoil anything for the artist in question and so on. <laughs> but apparently, but anyway, this was gonna be a two day event uh, and uh, unfortunately, I could, unfortunately, because of. Uh, some scheduling uh, conflicts. Uh, I couldn't get off work both days, so I could only make it one of the days. And unbeknownst to me, I got to know it a little bit later that um, this day, a uh, what should we say, a <clears throat> a uh, guest star was gonna come and do his uh, part on a one of the tracks, uh, and. Uh, I really became a little bit, oh, wow, uh, these guys are true professionals, and here I come uh, as the happy amateur, <laughs> you know, so I was a little bit, you know, can I really do this? But then I remembered a uh, word of wisdom my grandfather apparently told my father uh, when he was young, and it's never say no before you've tried, or don't say no uh, before you've tried and um, I think that's a little bit of a good word to live by uh, as well I also remembered a quotation from uh, I think it was author Ma Mark Twain who said that uh, and I'm quoting uh, 20 years from now you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the ones you did and I thought that with those two in the back of my mind I thought that what the heck I am going to do this because this is gonna be a a little bit of once in a lifetime experience at least in my opinion it was uh, it really was uh, but you know I did the gig and uh, I thought that it was this was a the gig was a real humbling experience uh, the ability to you know really see and hopefully capture the creative process at such a close, uh, you know, so close up, it was a really interesting experience and really worthwhile in my opinion. So it's something I'm gonna be very grateful <laughs> that I actually did do. And actually when I, when I, but then when I was actually back home after this session, photo session and uh, edited the images, I, I became a little bit I felt a little bit ill actually because uh, this was ambient light photography in a fairly dimly lit, lit uh, locale. Uh, so it was ISO 8000 on the D7200 uh, with a aperture that went from, you know, uh, what was it, about uh, 3, 5 to uh, 5, 6, somewhere in between that because when there were multiple people in the shot, I needed to get a bit of depth of field, uh, and that suffered from a lack of light because I was already about, I was pen, you know, going from about 180th of a second down to 150th of a second uh, of shutter speed. So, and I used it, unfortunately, most of my uh, lenses don't have vibration reduction as of now. But anyway, it was still a, in, really uh, astonishing event in my opinion and while I was editing them I found a video in my old playlist it was about a TED talk from 2015 I believe with a uh, um, Texan turned New Zealander uh, photographer Trey Radcliffe also known as Mr. HDR he runs the blog Stuck in Customs and uh, yeah 
I thought the one part of the TED talk when he talked about being on stage with Sir Patrick Stewart, um, the life lesson Trey learned from that encounter, I think was very applicable to the situation I found myself in uh, during this recording session. And instead of me trying to retell that story, <clears throat> From Trey's TED Talk, I think I'm just gonna I'm gonna put a link to the entire TED Talk in the description, but I'm just gonna show you that part. So take it away, Trey. Next. All right, now I'm getting older. Okay, I'm headed to college. What story do you want to hear now? On stage with Captain Picard, Patrick Stewart. Uh, the next nuclear power plants, or number three, writing a rejected novel. <laughs> All right, Captain Picard. I heard. Um, number one. Good, you guys are geeks like me. We'll get along well. We are simpatico. Okay, so um, now I'm uh, a little older. I'm going to SMU, which is Southern Methodist University in Dallas. I'm majoring in computer science and math. You know, still very left brain stuff. I kind of want to do something artistic, but it didn't seem so practical at the time. Anyway, I was a huge Star Trek The Next Generation fan. I've seen all of them. And I would sit there on Sunday night on the couch and watch it. And remember back then when we used to watch shows, uh, we would watch them without a laptop or a phone or an iPad. We would just watch the show. Uh, unbelievable, the olden days. So um, I was walking through the student union and I saw a flyer up. It said that Patrick Stewart was coming to my university and he would be performing Shakespeare at the Meadow School of the Arts. So I was super excited. I got all dressed up, went down there, went to this huge theater, thousands and thousands of seats, but they were all totally empty except for just two people in the front row. And this is kind of weird. So I walked down there and I, I sat down by him and I kind of sheepishly looked over and said, oh, is this the right place with Patrick Stewart? They're like, yeah, we think so, it's kind of weird. So it was super awkward. And then I started getting really worried about seeing Patrick walk out on stage. You know, is he going to be mad or is he going to be sad? You know, you don't want to see your, your hero or your idol sad. It's like, you know, seeing your, your, your dad sad or something. I just don't want to see it. But at the same time, I was excited to, to see him. So it's a very complex bouquet of emotions. So anyway, he came out on stage, he looked out, and he was like, oh, and then he ran off stage. I thought, oh my gosh, this is really awkward, what's happening? <laughs> Um, but he came back out on stage and he brought four chairs with him. He kind of sat him facing each other and he walked over to us and said, would you guys like to come up on stage with me? <laughs> and we were like, yes, totally. And so we, we got up on stage and he says, would you guys mind if I recited The Merchant of Venice? And we're like, no, that sounds super awesome. So for the next hour, he recited the whole thing beautifully and perfectly. He did all the voices. Uh, these Klieg lights were burning down on us. And I'll never forget it, at one point, he must have been wearing this um, tweed jacket, this old tweed jacket, and he's doing the soliloquy from Shylock, and he slammed his chest, and like dust flew up, and he's like <laughs> acting through the dust, and I thought, oh my God, this is like one of the greatest moments of my life. He's like a true actor, unbelievable. <laughs> so this whole thing stuck with me, and it was very meaningful, but its true meaning didn't sink in for about 15 more years. When I started sharing my photos online, I also started with the blog, Stuck in Customs. It's very popular now, but most people don't know, for the first two or three years, it was not popular at all. No one went there, basically just me and my mom were on the, <laughs> on the thing. But I loved doing it. You know, I was uh, getting my feet under me artistically. I was kind of creating myself. Every day I would put up a new photo and write a story. I still do that. Uh, but I really loved doing it. And then I thought back to Patrick Stewart and how there are only three of us there. And I realized the right people show up for you. You know, Patrick didn't walk out on that stage to see how many Facebook likes he could get or to see how many plus ones or how many YouTube subscribes he might get on his channel. He just came out there because he loved it. He loved acting. It didn't matter who was there to him. And that's what I was doing with my blog. I just loved doing this no matter who showed up, so there's a certain purity to that. And if it wasn't for that, I don't think I could have gotten through those first few years of the blog. So thank you, Patrick Stewart. All right. So. 
Well, I've seen this TED talk a number of times before and I suddenly realized that this was the same thing with me photographing these guys uh, doing their craft. Uh, they don't do this. I mean, it was such a brilliant experience to see that these guys, they don't do it for, you know, uh, you know, like when Trey was in college and he met Patrick Stewart on this place, it wasn't a rat race for likes on social media. I mean, um, so to just tie it all together, what's this video about really? Well, I'm not really a yes man in that sense, you know, like the Jim Carrey movie. Uh, but you, you should say yes to life experiences within reason, of course. Uh, but at the same time, I, I would like to th see life like do things you enjoy because you enjoy them. Don't force yourself to do things you want to do because of something as trivial as likes or followings on social media. That's just uh, insane in my opinion. And like Trey said in the TED talk, the right people will show up for you. And there's always going to be trolls and haters and all of that out there. Uh, but there is an easy solution for those. You can always, you know, ignore and or block them. But anyway, what I wanted to tell you is this was is something that I would I wouldn't think in a million years that I would be doing with my photography in this, uh, you know, what, whatever this is, in this, whatever this is. And uh, it was a very humbling experience and it was really a life experience as well. So, yeah. So if you enjoy what you do as a hobby, as a creative, whatever the thing might be, the right people will probably, hopefully, show up for you. And I think this was a really brilliant example of that. But uh, yeah, I think I'm rambling at this point. But anyway, I think this is all for me for now. And I hope this will be followed up a little bit in the future. Uh, so yeah, this is Tobias Bergstrom for TB Photo X 1.5 TFX, and I'd like to see you guys in the next video. And as always, yeah, no, I see you. I'll just see you in the next video. So take care from now on. Bye.